we offer our concerns, our problems before the Holy Throne of our God. And let's have this in our heart that is so sweet to trust in our Lord Jesus.
your grace, we offer our lives before you, O oh God, as your servant to the great, most high King. We offer our lives to you, O oh God.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to our virtual prayer gathering. So tonight, we will be studying or looking at Psalm chapter 1. This might be familiar to you. Most of the time, this is, this is, this is quoted by almost everyone who knew of the Bible. So, but let us look at at this chapter, at this verse, in light of prayer. So before proceeding, let us pray. Dear Father, we praise you and thank you for your kindness and grace and mercy toward us all. I pray that as we hear and listen to your word, enable us to really apply it in our lives. Thank you so much, Lord, for the grace and wisdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Psalm 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but, he, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. 
So let us focus on, on the benefit of meditating God's Word. What can we get? What can we derive or learn or earn from, from meditating God's Word day and night? So, first, let us see the benefit, the benefit of, 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 of meditating God's Word. So, one is, one is, you are likened to a tree firmly planted by streams of water. So, it means there is that depth, there is that rootedness, and, and there is that fruitfulness. So, when we meditate of God's Word, it will help us be grounded, be rooted in the Word. The more we know of God's Word, by His grace, by His Spirit, as our hearts have been changed, transformed by God to love Him, to love His Word, we will be able to apply His Word in our lives. And by that, we grow in our rootedness. So there is no shallowness when, when we constantly meditate God's Word. Now, you might be asking, why, how is it to meditate? What does it mean to meditate? To meditate is this. So if we read God's Word, not only we stop there na after one reading, then we're done. Meditating is thinking of the implication of God's Word in our lives. Meditation is asking ourselves, have we been in conformity to the Word or not? And Meditation, after answering those questions, it will lead us to respond to God's Word. And how do we respond to God's Word? We respond in prayer. Okay, remember, God's Word is His message. God speaks to us through His Word. And how do we respond? We respond in prayer. We respond in obedience. I said kanina na, we will look at this in light of prayer. So, let us apply meditation and prayer. No, reading of the Bible and prayer is somehow, mana siya ang direct nagmeet si meditation. No? So, delete lang siya nga, I am praying for my needs, for protection, for good health, or for whatever need. So, when I say, when we say na we are meditating, we are thinking of the application of God's Word in our lives and pray it to God, respond to God using His Word. By praying, the answer to the questions nga ato ang throw as we survey the text, as we compare our lives in light of the revealed Word of God. So, let us have someone as our example, illustration of how to do meditation. How to pray the scripture. So, this may not be exhaustive sets of, set of questions, but, but these questions you can ask. You may ask this. As you are to survey yourself, as you are to evaluate yourself, as you are to examine yourself using the Word of God. So, the first question that you can ask or you will ask 
is this. What is the text teaching me? What is this Psalm chapter 1 is saying? And another question is, how can I adore God? How can I worship God in light of the text that I just read? And the third one, what are the sins that I should confess in light of what I just read? What are the sins that were exposed when I read the text? And lastly, what can I ask God? What can we ask God? What can we pray in supplication in light of or in the basis of the truth that we just read. So first, let us answer the question, now what God is teaching here in Psalm chapter 1? Psalm chapter 1 is teaching us the importance, the value of the authoritative word of God. So if... if for one, I have shared a while ago that if we don't grow in light of the Word of God, if we are not rooted in the Word of God, then we will be shallow people. We are not that grounded people. So what does it mean to be shallow? Now, when we live our, when, when we are, as we live our life, you no, know, as we live our life, our lives could be shallow if we bank on, if we place our faith and confidence and trust in the created world and not in the Lord. That, that makes us shallow. So when we, are, when we are exposed by the Word of God, as God is speaking to us through His Word, we will grow in rootedness. So God is teaching us that we are to value the Scripture, to value the law of the Lord. When the author mentioned about the law, referring to the counsel of God, na it, it, it means that the whole counsel of God, the whole Scripture is God's authoritative word. So unless, unless we are fully submitted to the whole counsel of the Lord as revealed in His Word, then we will be like the other one, the wicked one, who is like a shaft, easily rejugayo mapalid, because, why man? Wala, wala, wala sense, shallow, no? Now, when, when we are confronted with troubles, persecution, hardships in life, if we are like the shaft, if we are like the wicked, then we, we will be easily be blown by the wind of trials and testings and persecution. It means that we will possibly give in to compromises. We might possibly give up, surrender, or, or compromise because we are not fully grounded, rooted in the Word. So that is what God is teaching us, that we are to value the Word of God. And I would like to point this out. Now, we are not to be picky in applying the Word of God. In our journey, in our Christian journey, we might find text portion of the scripture na struggle kita ga obey. And and I have heard of of mga beloved ga Christians na na naging reality ni sa ilang life, but they have outgrown the struggle by the grace of God and and yielded to the word of God, saying na Lord, if this is your will, then okay, I will do it. Even if it's hard, even if it will cost my, 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 my 
my my position, even it will cost my my reputation, then I will stand by this teaching. I will stand by this truth. So that is one. Valuing the the valuing the the importance, the authority of God's word. So all of us ought to be subjected, ought to be yielded and, and, and obedient to the revealed word of God. Of course, not only to, to that written word of God Langyud per se, but to the one who has written through the lives of many writers. We ought to be fully submitted, yielded to Him. Now, how can I adore God in this text? How can I adore God? It shows us here that, that seeking God, meditating in the Word of God, causes us to delight even more in who God is. So how can I adore God? That, that through His rever- revealed Word, I can praise God for who He is as it has been revealed through sa ihang Word. So who is God in this text? God is, is, is kind and merciful enough to show to me what it means to be rooted, to be grounded in His Word, and that is that thought alone is, is ought to lead me to, to praise and worship the Lord for such kindness and mercy. And, and it demonstrates also that God is so gracious. Again, we have learned in, 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 uh, in the preachings of Matthew that, that warnings are are, are, are expressions of, of love and kindness and grace. So if we are to walk not in light of the word but in accordance to the wisdom, the counsel of the wicked, then it is our destruction. Third question, what should I confess? What sin should I confess? One can be that there were many times I have listened to the counsel of the word, to the world, to the wisdom of the world, to the counsel of the world, and not of his word. I will confess, I will confess my, my sin of, of, of disregarding, neglecting his word. This, this passage is exposing right now the sins that I have been committed. So, through meditation, through meditation, let us let our, ourselves be exposed, be revealed with the Word of God. So, those things are some of the things now, I can, or we can learn from this word, from this, from this passage, on how we can confess, how can we ask forgiveness from the Lord. So what can I ask God now? How should now I pray? By the way, all of those things I mentioned in answer to those four questions, they are, this is in a form of prayer. No, this is in a form of prayer. So we are approaching the word, having a reverence, Jakai Lord, and, 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 and regards a young word. And now we are to ask the Lord. So how can we ask the Lord? How should we ask the Lord? So in light of what we just read, we can ask the Lord to one to give us that love for His Word, to give us that, that regard, that we will regard His Word 
over our wisdom, over our what we think is right, that God will grant us that regard, that reverence sa iyang word. And also, we can pray, we can pray, we can ask forgiveness for those many times we have disregarded His word. And you can be specific in, in the things that you have committed against the Lord, in the things that we have committed against the Lord. Could it be disregard ba? No, dishonoring authorities? Could it be ba like dishonoring authorities, like government? Could it be ba na, na, na not loving the brethren as we ought to, as we are called to love? Or how about we are we have failed to love the Lord and actually we have been failing in this area in loving the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we can be specific in 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 the things that we have sinned against the Lord and ask the Lord for forgiveness. So what I'm trying to 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 share with you tonight is this that meditation meditation is is not just simply doing a bible study doing the bible study the background of the text the context of the text is, is very important however we should not be sidetracked by the fact that when when we read the word it ought to to speak to us and we ought to listen to the word of god and once we have listened to His Word, how do we respond? We respond in prayer. Praying His Word back to Him. Like, as, like what I just shared, I can pray, we can pray, in response to His Word, in adoration. How can I adore God? Based on the text that God is merciful, that God is gracious and kind, and just, and lawful, I can adore and praise Him for that. And I can say in prayer the things that I have sinned against Him, the things, that the word that I have disobeyed. So, prayer, I hope that we can now see prayer as as actually conversing with the Lord, speaking with the Lord, using His Word. I hope now that you will see your, your Bible reading, your Bible study as a means to an end, not just an end in itself, but a means to an end. And that is to grow in your devotion, in your love, in your passion for the Lord. You might be asking, now, how are you in this area? I'm still an elementary, and I'm glad that, that God has been confirming mo- all the time, all the time, that that my growth happens in the context of community. And I praise and thank God for the brethren I have been journeying with that I can, I can exercise this meditation, this prayer that is praying the scripture. Medita- meditative prayer. Praying the scripture, responding to God's word. I hope what I just shared makes sense. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for for tonight that we can gather, that we can hear and listen and, and respond to your word. Cause us to have that growing desire and delight
to know your word, to know you through your word, and above all, apply you, honor you by doing what your word says. We pray that as a church, we will grow in this aspect of, of praying in response, responding to your word. Thank you so much, Lord. May you be honored in our prayer session tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A pleasant evening. I am Junior Realista, uh, a full-time Paglaom Children's Ministry staff, and at the same time, a full-time GCAP minister. I am tasked for this evening to present to you the prayer items for this evening's prayer meeting. Uh, starting with prayer for mental health. World Suicide Prevention Day is commemorated every year on September 10, which was Friday last week, to raise awareness on how we can go about helping people with suicidal thoughts. Suicide is one of the most tragic and devastating ways to leave the world behind, but it can be prevented. Based on a report, from the Philippine Statistics Authority, PSA, suicide incidents rose by 57% in 2020, compared to the pre-pandemic years. This prompted government officials to make an appeal to churches and spiritual leaders in the country to provide counsel and guidance to their followers to ease their anxiety, and help save them from self-destruction during the pandemic. As suicide cases continue to rise in 2021, the efforts of the church are clearly not enough. We all have to make a concerted effort to spread hope to those suffering from untreated mental health conditions. May we find encouragement from Psalm chapter 9, verses 9 to 10, which says, The Lord will also be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble, and those who know the name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not abandoned those who seek you. The following prayer items will be flashed on your screen. Let us pray.
Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve those challenged by serious and chronic mental and emotional illnesses. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Prayer for the family. As we continue to live in isolation with the physical distancing demanded by the new normal, we thank the Lord for the comfort of family. We thank the Lord for the warm embrace of a mother, father, siblings, or extended family members. We thank the Lord for the time we have with our families. When trials and challenges come to test our patience, forgiveness, and faith, we can turn them for unconditional love, unwavering support, and understanding. And let's pray for the Lord to bless our families and for family bonds to be strengthened in this continuing pandemic. In Colossians, Chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word of deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, God the Father. The following prayer slides will be flashed on your screen. Let us pray.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are our ultimate source of strength. When we are weak, you are strong. You lift us up when we are down. You renew our strength and we soar on wings like eagles. Thank you, God, for always raising us with your mighty hands. How strong our bonds with our family depends on you, Lord, which is why we ask you to always be the center of our family, relationships. Enable our families to be as triple binded cord that cannot easily be broken. Let your spirit fill our hearts so we can love each other just as Christ loved us. In our times of trials and troubles, God, we look to you. Life can hand us many different challenges that we know we cannot face on our own. But with you, Father God, we believe that nothing is impossible. We believe that you will always grant us the endurance to overcome obstacles that may come our way. You are our strength when we are weak, God. And we always grateful when you manifest your power through our lives. All this we pray in the name of our Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. And for our announcements. Virtual prayer gathering every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Via our Facebook page and YouTube channel. See you at the GCA parking area this Sunday at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and 3 p.m. If you can make it, join us over YouTube or Facebook at 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. We will launch our Kids Central Zoom Sunday soon. Journey with us online and we will keep you posted. We encourage our wider group and IDM leaders to continue meeting with your members. If you're planning to have an in-person session, please be mindful to observe safety and health protocols. We urge family to make most of our family devotionals, which we published bi-weekly. We are encouraged everyone to get inoculated. However, if you have health concerns or are pregnant or planning to get pregnant, please secure your health physician's advice before getting the vaccine. Like and follow our Facebook pages at Journey with GCAF, at Inside Out GCAF, at GCAF Worship. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, Golden City Alliance Fellowship, GCAF Worship. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope to see you next week. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for granting us this wonderful opportunity that we can pray together and, and listen to your word together. I pray that all of us will grow, will grow, Lord, in our obedience to you, that we will grow in our fear of you, in our devotion to you, in our love for you. Protect us as we retire to bed later or even as we eat our dinner. Thank you so much for your protection, for your favor. May you renew our strength for tomorrow, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.